Hello, my name is Mandurable, and this is my Iron Man guide to the Nightmare Boss. Now, any account style can use this guide. I'm sure the information will carry over, but this is from an Iron Man's perspective, and there will be certain things that is just very important for Iron Man. Uh, so if you're a main, you can skip past that. But to get started, I will teach how to get to the Nightmare Boss. It's pretty simple. Uh, the best place to start is to start at the Theater of Blood. You run north up this path. There's just a, a gap in the wall here and then into the dungeon there. So I'll show you real quick, and what you'll want to do is you'll pre-angler and pre-stamina whenever you're about to go in, which I'm already angled, but I'm not even going in. So so yeah, you run up the skates, and uh, I'll fast forward real quick as you can watch where I go. So you will pass this house, you do not go down that trapdoor. That's kind of like a bit of a tease. I, I went down there a couple times. And up through here, just go east in the dungeon. Okay, and when you get here, you're going to have to talk to Shura, uh, and then she'll just go through some dialogue about the boss, which, not going to lie, I space barred because my party was trying to get in there ASAP. We were, you know, one of the first groups to join this morning. Uh, up front here, this is for the mains, and the Iron Man will all meet at this portal. Now, when you go in the portal, you can drink here. See, I'm solo, so uh, it'll just start by itself. Uh, the Nightmare Boss will awaken after 40 seconds, so your team has that long to get in here. You'll start off by specking the boss, but we're not going to get into that just yet. And if somebody enters early on accident or during the fight, you can just exit really quick through there. So the boss is not starting anymore. And as a quick side note, if you were to die in the Nightmare, you can collect your things from Shira. But if your medallion is on you when you die, it's going to go into her stash. So to get back here, the best way is to grab an ectophile from the bank, grab a stamina potion and 10k coins. Then you will take the ectophile, and there's a ship just north of it here. So ectophile, you go to the ship, you need 10k coins on you. That ship will take you right here. You know, take your stamina dose, go back to the dungeon, same way we came, and run back collect your things for 60k coins, and you'll probably have to bank again, which is slightly annoying. <laughs> and now for the requirements to fight the Nightmare. I would highly recommend base 80 combat stats, but base 90s would be more ideal. Uh, you do not need range for this fight, and 70 prayer for piety is a must. The quest requirements are Ghost Ahoy for the Ectophile and access to Mortania, a Taste of Hope for the Draken's Medallion, which is very important to get you to the fight faster. And then if you're an Iron Man, Zogar Flesh Eater. Zogar Flesh Eater is very important for Iron Man. And the reason is because the boss will impregnate you throughout the fight. Yes, I did say impregnate. Uh, he hosts you with a parasite. And after about 15 to 20 seconds, that parasite will burst inside of you and cause 57 damage. But with Zogar Flesh Eater, you can get these Relysium Balms and they will negate that 57 damage. Alternatively, mains can use the Sandfew Serum, but you will not be able to afford those as an Iron Man because uh, you go through between zero to three doses per fight. I'm showing you here where you buy these Relicium Bombs. You trade Uglugnar after having completed the Zogar Flesh Eater quest. Now, to be able to trade him in the first place, you have to use one of these potions on the man, and that will unlock the shop for you. You do not have to unlock the shop to complete the Zogar Flesh Eater quest, so if you do not have the shop unlocked, what you're going to have to do is to go to Tobuana Village and grab a Rogue's Purse from right over here. I will show you real quick where that's located. So in the marshy jungle vine, just search one of these.
it takes kind of obnoxiously long. You can clean that. Now check the map where we are. Here is Tupawana. And now we will also need to go to this cave to grab the rogue's purse. So let's run there real quick. Now just search a fungus covered cavern wall. Get a rogue's purse, use both of these on the vial. And then you can just go back to Castle Wars, use the Relicium Balm on Tugnar, whatever his name is. <laughs> and then you're in business and you can then purchase from a shop up to 100 of these relatively embalms. The gear and inventory for this boss is very simple. You'll want to wear your best in slot melee gear so you can do any upgrades or downgrades to the setup as well as a crush weapon. The main attack style against the boss is melee and it's weak to crush so best in slot I believe is the scythe followed by the abyssal bludgeoned then the elder mole and the Zamorakian hosta. Lastly the Seracnus Cudgel. Um, I would definitely recommend having a crush weapon though, and technically the best in slot is Drop from the Boss, the new one-handed mace, but that'll be very hard to obtain, and that'll be later on once you've learned the boss, I'm sure. Um, you'll want to bring a spec weapon, either the BGS or the Dragon War Hammer. I like the Bandos God Sword, because that way you don't need a defender in the inventory, and it's all just one-hand weapons. You also need a magic switch. You don't need any magic gear. Accuracy does not matter. It's kind of like the DKs, um, but you want a trident, a Iban staff or slayer dart, but I would definitely recommend having a trident. Um, and then you can bring the occult necklace because it gives the 10% magic damage, which is also, I believe to be fairly important. Uh, as for your inventory, uh, when you're first starting out, you'll bring a lot more brews. Later on, you can switch down to more sharks or manta rays, but I would recommend bringing four to five super restores, two super combats. Of course, remember the Relicillium's Balm. <laughs> it's very important and it'll save you up to 150 damage per fight. Uh, bring a couple food and then the rest just brews. Have a teleport to your house and a teleport back to the Theater of Blood. Uh, that will ensure that you can do trips faster uh, because the travel time in this boss is pretty high. So that'll be accounting for a lot of your time. Having these on you will really save you some time. At the end of each fight, or if this is your first time fighting the Nightmare, be sure to teleport to your POH for a reflection pool or use Clan Wars to reset your stats. You can then use any bank, including the Theater of Blood, to reset your inventory. Be sure to angler fish up and stamina pot before heading back to the Nightmare. When your party is ready to begin the fight, drink from the pool of nightmares. And then after a 40 second delay, the nightmare will begin. I would highly recommend keeping game sounds on as the nightmares attacks each have very distinctive sounds. Keep an eye on game chat for when the fight will begin, make sure it is super combat, and be ready to spec the boss as soon as it begins. During this fight, you will have to destroy the Nightmare Shield Bar three times, one time in each phase. The boss will attack with all three attack styles. For mage and range, you have a similar time to Jad to react to them, but melee happens instantly.
I will now play each attack cell three times in a row. Be sure to watch and listen to the differences. The Nightmare will lock onto and follow the player with the highest defensive stats for the entire fight. This player is the tank and should pray melee in between each attack because melee attacks happen instantly. If you are not the tank, just stand on the opposite side from him and you will not have to deal with melee attacks. Once per phase, the boss will select 2-3 to three players to be targeted by a minion called Husks. These Husks hold down that player and they cannot move until they kill the two Husks. They're very easy to kill and don't pose too much of a threat, but it is good to work as a team and kill these just as soon as they spawn. Throughout the fight, the boss will randomly substitute an auto attack with these dark portals. All you have to do is step one tile away from them to avoid any damage. I'll play the attack one more time. Keep in mind that there is a large portal underneath the boss near its hands. Near the end of each phase, the boss will spawn flowers. This part is quite common sense, you just stand where the living flowers are. Take a look at the person in the top left who does not stand in the square with the living flowers. In each phase, once you have destroyed the Nightmare Shields, its health bar will appear. It is now time to charge each of these four totems in the corners by attacking them. They are very weak to magic, so definitely use mage. This is also a good time to drink Cerebrus because lowered stats do not affect your DPS here. Once the four totems are fully charged, the Nightmare will instantly take one third of its HP and damage. It will then spawn mobs called Sleepwalkers next to each of the totems. These Sleepwalkers will walk towards the Nightmare, and if they reach the boss, everyone in the party will take damage based on how many of them reach the boss. I recommend standing near the totem with the least amount of players near it, that way all of the Sleepwalkers are killed. Notice how the Nightmare Shield Bar resets as Phase 2 begins. It then locks on to the player with the highest defensive gear. I wouldn't recommend tanking if this is your first time at the Nightmare, but I did tank the first 30 or so kills because we didn't realize how the target was chosen. During Phase 2 and Phase 3, the Nightmare will randomly use the Infect Parasite special attack. If you are infected, you need to drink a Relysium's Balm or a Sanfu Serum, because in 10 to 15 seconds, the Parasite will explode out of you. If you do not drink this, you will take severe damage. Notice that this person did not drink the Balm and could have died because of it. Here are two examples of where I died to the Parasites before we knew that you could mitigate the damage with Relysium Balm. Parasite. What's your pain? I don't really know, but I can't avoid the shadows on this one. 
Yeah, I, I struggle as well. I'm just kind of preemptively moving like every. What? I was praying melee and he f changed my prayer. Uh oh. No, no, no. Are oh, you. Oh, you. This is why the Elysium Bomb is so important and I consider a must have for the fight. When the parasites hatch, kill them as quickly as possible as they will heal the boss or totems as indicated by these purple hit marks. During phase two and phase three, when your screen flashes pink, it means that the nightmare has activated a shuffle prayer special attack. When this happens for the next 15 to 20 seconds, mage prey will activate range, range prey will activate melee, and melee prey will activate mage. This effect will expire with no clear indicator other than your prayer changing and a chat message. Now that we have destroyed the Nightmare's second shield, it is time to recharge the totems with magic attacks. This will do another one-third damage to the Nightmare's health. Here we take 16 damage because the projectile on my trident wasn't quick enough. It is optional to bring a blowpipe, some people like it, but I'll leave that up to you if you want to try bringing a blowpipe for the sleepwalkers or not. Phase 3 has two new mechanics that replace the nightmare's parasites and prayer shuffle attacks. For the first new mechanic, the nightmare will spawn a field of spores. These spores act like landmines, and if you get too close to them, they will blow up and force you to walk rather than run and decrease your attack speed. Sometimes they're unavoidable, and when paired with other attacks, they can be quite dangerous. The second special attack for phase two, the nightmare hops into a portal that takes him to a random side of the room. He then charges in a straight line, dealing high damage to anybody in his path. This attack has been nerfed on the second day of release. Apparently it made too many gamers angry, so now he waits one tick before charging. That is not the case here. Once the third shield is down, recharge the totems one last time to kill the boss. Oh no, we have a casualty! Let's rewatch that one more time in slow motion. Sacrifices are made, Rip.
A few notes to leave you with. I started making this guide the day of release, so if there's any new information that's been discovered, please let me know in the comments. I have also not confirmed that gear defense determines who is the tank in this fight, but it makes sense to me. I tanked like 30 in a row, so I'm pretty sure that this is the case. And lastly, I was told that if you SGS spec sleepwalkers, that it hits for a maximum hit and restores a good amount of HP slash prayer, so if you have an SGS, give that a try. This concludes my guide on the Nightmare. I had a ton of fun working on it. It was a lot of work, but I was learning a lot and just had a good time with it. Um, if you have any further questions, leave them down below. I'd be glad to help you out. Other than that, have a great rest of your day. Check out my Ironman Progress series if you have time, and I'll catch you in the next video.